Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Toast, where we give you all of the latest gaming news. And out of nowhere, Sony started to drop a lot of PlayStation 5 news today. Yeah, we got a lot of new details on several PlayStation 5 exclusives, some exciting, some surprising, and some just a little bit odd. But we're going to go over all of that today. Also, if you didn't already think that Xbox was dominating with RPGs, well, it sounds like they are already building yet another big RPG, so stay tuned for that as well. First, though, we do have a lot more to talk about, so let's get right into it, starting off with Titanfall 3. Yeah, you heard that right, Titanfall 3. Not for the time being, this is just a rumor, but an insider by the name of Bias12 is claiming that Titanfall 3 is in active development right now. He does apparently have a good track record with Apex Legends news, so there is a reason to believe this. And furthermore, another insider and streamer, the Neon Beast, also backed up this claim. With that said, do take this news with a grain of salt until it's officially confirmed. But there is a reason to believe this at the very least. Just earlier this year, EA did note that Titanfall 3 is not off the table, which was very interesting, because they definitely made it sound like they were considering a third game. But now, just a few months later, we have two separate insiders claiming that Titanfall 3 is in active development, which is certainly very exciting. While the first game had a ton of hype surrounding it, being an early Xbox One exclusive, the second game didn't get near as much attention which was kind of sad, honestly. It's actually one of the best first-person shooters this generation, and not only does it have a great multiplayer, but the single player is surprisingly very good. So I would definitely like to see what they could do with a third game, so hopefully this one is true, and we hear about Titanfall 3 soon. And speaking of overlooked games, the Nintendo Switch is getting a new game, Ghost of a Tell, and it's releasing very soon. In fact, it comes out on October 8th, and this is a fantastic little game. It's been out on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC for a few years now, but I would actually consider it one of the best hidden gems available right now. It's a stealth-based game, and we really don't get enough of these type of games anymore. I mean, I guess we will finally get Splinter Cell with that VR game, but if you want more of a standard game, then Ghost of a Tell is a great stealth-based experience. I also think it's a perfect fit for the Switch, which apparently I feel that way with several games, but seriously, I just love the portable mode on the Switch, and I think certain games fit it better than others. But with that said, don't sleep on this game. It's not getting much coverage, but I can honestly say that Ghost of a Tell is a good game. So as long as it doesn't have technical problems on the Switch, you might want to add this one to your Nintendo Switch wish list. That wasn't the only Nintendo news today though, as they officially revealed that a new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character will be revealed tomorrow on October 1st at 10 a.m. Eastern Time or 7 a.m. Pacific Standard. This will be the second character coming to the Fighter Pass Season 2, and the Smash community is going absolutely crazy over this one. Who could this mystery fighter possibly be? And that's a thing. It really is hard to tell with this game. I mean, they have brought in characters like Banjo-Kazooie, Cloud from Final Fantasy, among several other IP that they don't specifically own, so as long as they can get third parties to agree, pretty much any character could pop up in Smash by this point. Really, I don't know why anybody would disagree, because it's basically free publicity as Smash Ultimate is insanely popular. There are some characters that I think has a little bit more of a realistic chance of appearing in Smash, such as Dante from Devil May Cry and Crash Bandicoot. And that right there is the one I'm looking at right now. Crash 4 does release on October 2nd, so could they possibly reveal Crash for Smash just one day before the Crash 4 release? That would be huge, but you know, I'm only speculating. That's why I will ask you in what your prediction is. Who do you think this new fighter will be? Let me know in the comments below. Now we also got some new free games to talk about if you have Xbox games with gold or PlayStation Plus. Yes, both were revealed, and I'm happy to say that PlayStation Plus has another solid lineup for the month of October. You will get Vampyr and Need for Speed Payback. Vampyr though is actually a pretty good game, and what I like about this inclusion is that I think it will be new for a lot of people. Vampyr is a lot of fun, but it wasn't some huge seller, so by it coming to PlayStation Plus, it should put a lot more eyes on this game. As for Xbox games with gold, though, it unfortunately continues that trend of being just a little lacking. 
Xbox games with gold for the month of October will include Slay Away Camp, Maid of Skur, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, and Costume Quest. Now, I will say that Costume Quest is a pretty good game, especially if you like Double Fine, but overall this is not a great month for Xbox games with gold. Like I said though, that's kind of been the trend here recently, so it's not overly surprising. I mean, I guess it is what it is, and at least you do get free games with your gold subscription, but it does leave something to be desired here. With that said though, I do have some good Xbox news today as NXL revealed they're working on a new RPG. They did just release Wastelands 3, so this may be surprising to some people that they're already working on a new game, but this is something that we have talked about on this channel a few different times. Based off of previous reports and job listings, NXL has been working on a second RPG for quite a while, and it's supposed to be a big AAA game, which is very exciting to hear. NXL is an, an incredible RPG studio with some of the most talented RPG developers in the entire industry. And now that Xbox is funding them, I think that they have the potential of really taking people by surprise. This could end up being their biggest and best game yet if they truly do make a big AAA game. Now, Brian Fargo did say it's still in its infancy stage, so it's probably going to be a few years before we see this game ourselves. But I have to say, if you really start to look at what Xbox is doing, they pretty much own the entire RPG market. Not only did they just acquire Bethesda, which has games like Starfield, Fallout, and The Elder Scrolls, but they also have Obsidian Entertainment, Playground Games, and NXL. Yeah, Fable 4, The Outer Worlds, Unavowed, The Elder Scrolls, and whatever NXL is working on will more than likely be exclusive to Xbox and PC. That is an absolutely massive lineup of big RPGs. Xbox truly is becoming the best RPG publishers right now. One thing is for sure though, you certainly can't say Xbox has no games anymore, and with them now owning 23 studios, I would expect great games from them next generation. And before we start talking about PlayStation, two Starfield pictures did leak online. It doesn't really show us much about it, other than the setting and its HUD. You can see some oxygen levels here, but apparently these pictures were from a 2018 build, so a lot has probably changed since then. Nonetheless, I guess it's more information than what we had previously up to this point, so I thought I would at least talk about it real quick. Let's talk about the PlayStation 5 though because they dropped a lot of new details on PlayStation 5 games today in several different blog posts. The first of which is about the new Spider-Man remaster that's included in the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition. I'm still not a big fan of this not being a standalone game, but the good news here is that visually it looks like a pretty big upgrade based off of these new pictures. It will include things such as ray tracing, and you can see how gorgeous the reflections look in the remaster. I keep saying it, but ray tracing is going to be a very noticeable change next generation, and you can see a huge upgrade with the addition of ray tracing in the Spider-Man remaster. With that said, Insomniac Games did make a very odd change as well. For some reason, they decided to change the face model of Peter Parker, and I think that their goal here was to make him look more similar to Tom Holland. I'm not a big fan of this decision though. Now this is just my personal opinion, but I think that the Spider-Man game is better than the movies, and I like that it's its own unique experience. And that's a thing. Peter Parker is 23 years old in the game, while Tom Holland is around 16 in the movies. I mean, Peter Parker is supposed to be more mature in the game, being 23 years old. But with this new face model, he looks pretty young. Honestly, he looks like he is a teenager with this new face. Insomniac Games did say that this was because they needed a new face to fit the facial animations for a next generation experience, but to me, it just feels unnecessary. I think that the original did a phenomenal job, and it fit his age and the tone of the story. I don't know, I just feel that this is a very strange decision, but maybe you feel differently than I do. If you do, let me know in the comments below. We also got some new details on the PlayStation 5 exclusive Returnal, and really this game has been intriguing from the very first moment they announced it. It is being developed by House Marquee, which are very talented developers, but this looks to be their biggest game yet. And up to this point, we really haven't gotten much information up until today, where we got one new key detail. Returnal will surprisingly be a roguelike game where if you die, you will have to return back to the beginning. I guess it kind of makes sense on why it's named Returnal now, but I do find that to be very interesting. 
I'm not usually a big fan of these type of games, but if they're done right, they can be great. As an example, Hades and Dead Cells are great roguelike games, but this is more of a big AAA experience. That's not something that you usually see with these type of games, and that aspect of the game makes me very curious to see what they do here. It does look like it's going to be a cinematic game as well, but as we're seeing with Hades, you can have a good story with roguelike games. With that said, I understand it's not a genre for everybody, and it can even be intimidating at times, but I'm optimistic about this game. We do have one more PlayStation 5 game update though, as Ratchet & Clank got some new details. Yeah, so apparently Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart will be yet another PlayStation 5 exclusive that does not run in native 4K resolution. It will instead be dynamic 4K where in some instances, they lower the resolution depending on what is happening on screen. They did however say that they do have a performance mode for 60 frames per second, but I'm not exactly sure what that means just yet. It could be like 1440p with 60 frames, or maybe something else. It does sound like the dynamic 4K though will not be running at 60 frames per second, which is a little bit disappointing, but this does seem to be a trend for the PlayStation 5. Miles Morales also has a performance mode, and Demon's Souls will apparently be running in 1440p, though that game does look gorgeous. Do keep that in mind though, even if these games don't have native 4K resolution, they can still look great visually, but for the moment it does seem like the PlayStation 5 may struggle with reaching 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, and having ray tracing all at the same time. For that matter, we still need to see if the Series X can do that, so it's something to keep an eye out for heading into next generation. Either way, it looks like PlayStation 5 games getting performance modes will be a regular thing going forward, or at least early on. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for helping make this content possible. Peace out.